rotate the vise back, orientation locked. Okay, is it working? Why is orientation locked? So I think I'm live. I'm trying to learn how to do this. I, uh, I can't tell. There we go, we're live. So I'm sitting here on um, Colorado's campus. Obviously it's after the game. I, uh, I had to find a spot to get Wi-Fi. I talked to a lot of Nebraska fans, talked to a lot of Colorado fans in there. I'll tell you what, overwhelming majority and this isn't my take. I don't know. I got to go and watch the game the right way because I had to watch the game from the stands, which makes it a lot harder to evaluate everything happening, right? I saw some issues. I saw a couple of little good things, but it's hard. Anyway, a lot of people were saying, when's the change of quarterback coming? And a lot of people were asking questions about the offensive coordinator. And I, I didn't have any answers at the end. They were like, Connor, what's the good news? What's the, what's the positive takeaway? Because there's always five things we learn. There's always some positive. After Minnesota, it felt like there were a, a lot of moments for hope, you know? And after today, it's just kind of like, huh. When some guy walked up to me and said, hey, man, love the channel. We're not going to a bowl game this year. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I, I loved your preseason preview, and I thought six wins made sense, but now I know we're not going to a bowl game this year. And usually I laugh, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 chill, chill, chill. There's still reason to be optimistic. There's still reason to be positive because X, Y, Z. And today, what? It's tough when you line up your, uh, your number one receiver on Travis Hunter and you ask him to do something that he should have never been asked to do. That's one thing I heard. Alex Bullock's a walk-on, goes from no role to lining up on Travis Hunter. It's a lot to ask. Like, props to him for even doing it. Props to him for going out there and making a push, but what's the expectation? And you, you ask that of other guys on the team and other position groups. What's the expectation? Colorado, I saw a funny, a funny tweet. It said something along the lines of, don't worry guys, we got to give Matt Rule three years. It's not like he's going against a coach who's in his first year with a brand new roster or anything like that. And I was like, ah, oh, geez, Dion and Dion and Rule had the same same opportunity, and one just did it a totally different way. It's interesting because obviously we we want to stick to the Nebraska culture. We don't want to have the crazy attrition and the uh, the mentality that Colorado went into this season with. But as a fan, you want to win now, and if that's what it takes to win now, you just wish they would freaking do it, right? But you can't. It's it's not the Nebraska way. They're not going to flush out their entire roster and start over. Also, there's no coach other than Deion Sanders who would be able to make that happen. So props to them. I think it's it's another thing, um, like hats off to Colorado. This was proof, man. They they weren't just a flash in the pan. They're actually a good team. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Colorado fans, for the most part, are super cool. There's a couple like that who are like obnoxious, right? But for the most part, Colorado fans were freaking awesome this whole trip. I'm on their campus. It's fucking beautiful over here, honestly. Really nice campus. People are really friendly. Uh, they all talk. They weren't like talking shit on the grass the whole time. They make jokes, you know, but they were pretty positive. Anyway, going back, um, only Dion could build a team like that. Only he could, could flip a roster like that. And only he could come out and win his first two games in the fashion he did. So that, that's not the expectation for Nebraska, but it is still frustrating to think that there was enough talent. At least what we heard in the off season was there was enough talent. Matt Rule said, yeah, we just needed to get some pieces and we can be a competitive team. But it didn't look like that today. It didn't look like we had enough pieces. So yeah, it's really, it's really tough for me. Sorry, I haven't even looked at live chat yet. I'm just still processing this game. There were four turnovers, man. Four freaking turnovers. What's the answer to the turnovers? I mean, you tell me, is it time to bench Jeff Sims? I like Jeff Sims, but I can't defend it, right? I can't defend the upside because how much upside are we getting? He broke a 57-yard touchdown run down the sideline. Super exciting. Made me feel like there was a chance. But outside of that, it kind of felt flat. Never really, uh, never really got the passing game going the way that he has to, right? It's, it's criminal for a college quarterback to not go for 150 yards passing. It's criminal. And I don't think he hit 150 50 yards passing today. So, yeah, I don't have answers. 
Am I like John Johnston? Do I not have, do I not have hope? <laughs> Todd just texted me. Todd said, discipline is the answer. And that's on the head coach. I think that's part of it. Colorado had more, more uh, penalties in Nebraska today, which I was surprised by. Nebraska had six for, I don't know how many yards, 60. Colorado had like nine. It was sloppy from both ends. But yeah, I do feel like John Johnson right now. Fuck everything. Go Big Red. There is no hope or whatever he says. I mean, that's how it feels. And I don't want to be that guy, man. But Jesus, what do I? Vox says there were three reasons we lost that game. Uh, Harburg, AJ says Harburg seems to be the, the a safe bet. Get him more reps and discipline. He can't have dumb penalties. Yeah, Harburg did look good at the end there. But he was going against the second string. Again, it goes back to the coaches know what we don't, right? The coaches know what's behind. And, and you go back to Adrian Martinez getting benched for Luke McCaffrey. How did that pan out? I don't know, man. Uh, the turnovers didn't help at all. Turnovers really fucked him up. And, uh, yeah, Colorado fans like to just jump in anytime they can with, with their words. It, I actually don't feel bad, though. I don't feel like the Colorado fans were assholes today. Man, it's tough. It's just frustrating. It's frustrating because all the Nebraska fans I talked to were like, well, what do we expect for the rest of the season? Do you think we can win a game? I was like, what are you talking about, can win a game? They're like, dude, next week I play Northern Illinois, and they're actually a tough team. And I was like, Jesus, they're right. Every week's a battle. It goes back to last year. It's like, geez, we're still running on last year's fumes. It's still the same team. Mm. Jake says, let's be honest. We're 4-0. We beat Minnesota and Colorado, and then we beat ourselves twice. Hilarious. We didn't beat Colorado. There was no, nothing about today was we beat Colorado. I mean, Minnesota, they looked better than Minnesota. They played better than Minnesota a lot of that game, and they let that one slip away. We all believe, and we all know Nebraska should have beat Minnesota. That's, yeah. Colorado curb stomped them. I mean, anything Colorado wanted to do, they could do. Someone told me Nebraska had three sacks in the first half. I don't remember that, honestly. Like, I wasn't keeping track because I was, you know, enjoying the game from a different perspective than I usually am. But... Even with the, the, uh, the three sacks, the problem was, I'm live streaming. The problem was, uh, sorry, I got sidetracked with these people talking to me. The problem was during the game, they couldn't get enough pressure. And when they did get enough pressure, there weren't any defensive linemen fast enough to get to the quarterback. That was my takeaway. I could be wrong. Was there a lot of pressure on the quarterback? I don't think so. And if there's no pressure on the quarterback, it takes more or it puts more on the DBs to make plays. And when you're going against receivers who are that fast, that talented, who are finding ways to get open, and we're getting beaten zone. I don't know if we got beaten man that much. I saw a couple zone the plays where they got beat. Again, I have to watch the game from a different lens. I, I saw it from far away. Uh, Nick says, no one should be surprised. Rule year one, Temple was two wins. Year one, Baylor, one win. How is this shocking? Nick, it's shocking because Nebraska had more talent than both those teams. That's why it's shocking, just straight up. Now that we're looking at it, is that true? And it, it's, I mean, there's, there are definitely talented players on the team, but how do the talented players fit with this scheme? I think that's a better question. Because I don't think it's like we have a bunch of bad players, honestly. I don't think Nebraska has a bunch of bad players. There's a bunch of guys who are super built, pretty fast, good tacklers, good hitters, good playmakers. Mind you, there's no elite players. Like Colorado has a few elite players. Who are Nebraska's elite players? That's a good question to ask yourself. And how many games can you win with zero elite players? That's another question to ask yourself. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, Dreaming Digital said, Rule said there was no chance they were going to take Sims out of the game. Wasn't even a discussion. Yeah, that's the thing. Rule will live and die by that. That's what it sounds like to me. So having the conversation of, oh, well, should they start Chubba Purdy or Heinrich Harburg? What's the point of even having a conversation? Sims is the guy because Sims gives them the element they want, which is a guy who can run the ball consistently. Looked like Harburg could too today, but I don't know. Keegan says, beautiful stadium. Yeah, stadium was beautiful. Everything about Colorado is freaking awesome. That's why it's so hard for me to hate on Colorado. Fans were nice. Stadium's beautiful. City's freaking awesome. Bar scene's great. Everything about this place is very cool. There was no issues, no drama, other than a couple of guys saying, you know, fuck, fuck Nebraska, rather be dead than red, whatever. But no drama, no piss balloons, no people messing with you. Super friendly. Very nice. So I would, I would definitely come back to Colorado. I'll tell you that right now. I had a worse experience at, uh, at Wisconsin and Michigan than I had at Colorado. And Wisconsin was really good, actually. Michigan wasn't as good. But, yeah, Colorado's fantastic. Um, 
Linnea says, can't shake the frosty feeling. Hmm. This is Sims' fourth year starting as a college QB. I don't see anything changing with him. We got home games to get another QB game time. Yeah, that's the problem, and that's what a lot of people told me today. They're like, Sims is in year four. Any of the issues he would have been able to fix would have been fixed. So how long do you live by that? Hmm. I, you guys tell me, did you see him checking down, uh, checking down other reads, or was he eyeing down his receiver the entire time? I couldn't tell from my angle. If he is still staring down his receivers, it's like, man, we, we learned where that got us last week. It's just tough, man. Bruce says, I don't like Rule, and I said we shouldn't have hired him. Look, I don't think Rule's a problem. I think Rule is a guy who has his process and his way of doing things, and to get his system set up, it's going to take years. It's going to take two, three. It's not going to be right now, right away, especially when you start two games on the road against two good teams. Okay, Minnesota, seven-win football team this season, right? We can all agree Minnesota's a seven-win team, at least. Both team is the point. Both teams, seven years in their system. Colorado, first-year team, but Dion came in rehauled their roster brought in an NFL quarterback who's gonna be could be a top five pick and uh that's just not what Nebraska did so the expectations to win these two games I mean was it fair expectation probably not not in hindsight before it was a fair expectation but hindsight ugh, they needed to win that Minnesota game for a bull for a bull win though Nick says seven total sacks seven total sacks for Nebraska or for Colorado High Republic says, I'm sorry, Connor, you're a little delusional. I haven't made one take on this, I don't think. I think the only take I've made is that it takes more time to build a team. Every take I've given you is other people's opinions and what I'm hearing from other people and what they think. I don't know what takes I've given. Because uh, I don't know. I'm not going to give you a take right now until I go back and watch the game from a different perspective. So I don't know how I'm delusional. Oh, m and Sports says we sacked him eight times. But it didn't look... To me, it didn't look like, even though they sacked him a few times, it didn't look like they were getting pressure on the QB enough because he had enough time to roll around the pocket, and they weren't bringing him down. That was another problem. They get their hands on it, but couldn't bring him to the ground. Obviously, that's not going to be the situation in every game. If they can get in the backfield consistently like that against other teams and not let him scramble around and find receivers downfield, then there won't be an issue. You go back to the two-point conversion, right? I don't think there's any other quarterback on Nebraska's schedule who's going to be able to do that. I'm trying to think. No, I don't think there's a single quarterback that Nebraska's going to play this year who can run around like Shador can. Uh, going for gold. Thank you for the $2. Sims embarrassed himself. Hope he gets it together. Yeah, that was tough for him. I feel bad for Sims. He's going to have a lot, a lot of hate, I think, this week. A lot of people saying he shouldn't be starting. Uh, AJ says, defense was getting right after the QB. But I saw a lot of holding... Uh, can't beat stuff. Oh, sorry. The, the chat's going too quick. It's my first time live streaming from my phone. I'm sorry. Jesse says, Connor will have to watch the game over. Defense was all over the QB. It didn't look like that from my perspective. Honestly, it didn't. It looked like the QB was running around the pocket and finding guys downfield. There were times when they got to him and brought him down, but it didn't look like it to me. I don't know. It, it felt like the general feeling of the game was the defensive line couldn't get back there enough and consistently enough to stop them from passing it. But if, they're, if the defense does look really good, then I guess it's all on the offense. The offense just can't score because when the offense can't move the ball, you're putting the defense in bad situations. I do know for a fact the offensive line, again, struggled. But what, what's the expectation? I don't know. It's just frustrating. Scott says he thinks the defense played well. When you're on the field all day and with a short field, it's tough. Yeah, and that's how it was uh, last year, all season. When you play on a short field, you have no opportunities because – Okay, there was that one play when they were on the 30-yard line after, I don't even remember, it was a fumble or an interception. I think it was an interception. In the first play out the gate, Colorado hit him in the corner of the end zone. It was just, didn't even give the defense a chance. So, yeah. And keep in mind, I love the defense. I think the defense is a lot stronger than the offense. There's no question. They're the highlight of the team. But, yeah, it was frustrating. Uh, Sims, Hunter, and Sanders carried Colorado that W. The positive takeaway is that it's Minnesota and Colorado, both on the road, two power five teams on the road, hard to beat in our situation. I think that is the, the one thing that we have to remember. What do you expect out of Rule in the first year? He's coming in, trying to install a new system with some new key pieces, and he has to go on the road to one team who's legit and one team who's now proving to be. 
uh, Evan Seption, thank you for the 10. Saw a few things I like. Defense may be legit, but can the offense please figure something else out? CU's D was not that great. Are we still thinking a bowl game this year? No, GBR for life. If the D was as good as you guys are saying it was, then yeah, a bowl game's still an option. But the quarterback situation would have to get fixed. That's the problem. Do you believe the quarterback situation can get fixed? You can't be one-dimensional and win games. We saw that today. The turnovers also have to get fixed. Four turnovers to one. So Nebraska went negative three in the turnover category. They lost by how many? 21? 22? Something like that. No Name says, do you miss Casey yet? Yeah, a lot of people were saying, do you miss Casey yet to me today? Because they watched me talk about Sims positively last week. And you wish you would have more options, right, to test out. That's, that's my take. We have to develop QB two and three. Rule, rule pulls Sims at some point as he keeps making the same mistakes. Yeah, next week and the week after are really crucial for the offense because a lot of different guys are going to get to play. So that'll be good. We'll get to see two different quarterbacks at times. And uh, I don't know how long Sim's going to be out or if he's going to be out at all. He came back on the field at some point today, but they didn't let him play. Ankle injuries usually get worse the second day. But I, I guess he plays, especially if in the press conference that I have not watched yet, Rule said that there was never a uh, question of whether they were going to take him out or not. move Sims to wide receiver. Sims is a, is a great playmaker and would be really good as a running back or receiver, but he would never do that. I think we've now realized Sims is not an NFL quarterback. That's my take. I, right now, I wouldn't call him an NFL quarterback. Maybe he can shit. No. Sims isn't an NFL quarterback. Rodis, thank you for the $20 super chat. I appreciate you. Taylor says we sacked eight times. Yeah, I think they had three sacks in the first half that I remember. After that, it was kind of a blur. I watched the game out of frustration because I was at the game. Remember that. So the defense maybe played better than I thought they did, but I just watched them over and over give up big plays. But when I watch it back, maybe I'll be more impressed by the defense. Uh, they were in Sanders' face, running for his life often. That was good, too. I did see that. It's just they couldn't bring him down because Sanders is such a freak athlete. It's so game changer when you've got a good quarterback, right? Even if you have a serviceable quarterback, it's a game changer. Zach says, I just want to be wrong. I predicted 40, 45 to 13. Uh, I know you didn't think Matt's the problem, but I just don't see him even getting us to the conference title. Well, Right now, we're not looking at a Matt Rule team. We're looking at the bones of a Matt Rule team. He's going to take at least two years to get his recruits in to fit his system, right? There's no instant, instant solution for Matt Rule because he doesn't bring in an entirely new team from the transfer portal like Deion Sanders would. So it's, it's so hard to blame Matt Rule because he's, he's not being hired to come in and fix Nebraska right away. He's, he's hired to come in and revamp this program his way which makes it more frustrating because then it's like, okay, well, as a Nebraska fan, what's your expectation supposed to be? Is your expectation supposed to be, okay, well, we're going to win four or five games this year, and that's, that's fun to watch? Is it don't watch games this year because you'll just get too pissed off because as a Nebraska fan, you have such – see, it's shit like that. Like, just they think they're cute. Fuck you. Like, what? They think they're cute. It's just a few of them. Just nonsense. Um, Colorado hasn't been good for a long time, so I'm happy for them. They really wanted this. Uh – what was I saying? Oh, the expectations for Matt Rule. Do you watch these games or do you just save yourself? I got a lot of comments from people saying, I'm just going to be on the lake. I'm going to save myself. I'm not watching any more games this year because I don't want the brain damage. I don't want the stress. I don't want to be pissed off. Mm. I only got so many Nebraska football seasons in my lifetime, right? Can I take one off where I don't watch and don't pay attention? I don't know about you. I don't think I could do that. So I just give myself brain damage every Saturday. Uh... Exceptional defense overshadowed by an anemic offense. The Jeff Sims experiment is done. Let's give someone else a chance to be the play caller. How'd you guys like per, or Harburg today? I thought Harburg flashed, although it was against second team defense. I think it, the touchdown was against second team defense. Fedoni finally had two catches. He had a great grab and then he had the touchdown. So good for him to get a little bit of confidence. Good for Harburg to get some confidence too. That was great. So I think those are the positive takeaways if there are any, right? High Mountain Guy says QB issue and turnover issue were the same. Uh, didn't look like the other two had any secret sauce either when given the chance. Maybe the room just isn't great. Yeah, I think 
I think a lot of questions are, how's the QB development? How's Satterfield? And uh, is Satterfield the same type of coach? As Rule, he needs a few years to get his guys in and he just doesn't have the right pieces yet? I don't know. A lot of people were saying uh, they want the quarterback from, from Ohio State, Lincoln Kineholtz. Is that his name? I, I had four people tell me that today. They're like, oh, we need to go and steal a quarterback like that. Interesting. It's a process. It's going to take two or three years. We have some legacy guys coming in soon. The defense play good. Offense left them out to dry. That's the issue, right? The defense can't succeed if the offense can't score. So that was, that was uh, what happened in 2021. It happened a lot last year, and it looks like that's going to happen again. Who would have thought the defense shows up so quickly, but the offense wouldn't be the one who'd be able to get it going? Uh, what, what, what? Hang on, sorry. Any chance Kalen starts day one as a freshman next year? I know it's kind of early, but just a thought. Uh, no, I don't think a true freshman would start at QB. I think that they would probably go and get somebody out of the portal if they didn't like Harburg or Purdy, which they would know this year. If they don't like Harburg or Purdy enough, they're going to get another QB out of the portal. That'd be my guess. I don't know. Thanks for the $20, though. Uh, let me see. Rodis, thank you for sending 20 again. It looks like you sent it twice. Appreciate you. Bogo, thank you for the five. Defense is bought in. We'll get better. Just need a game manager at QB to get through the season. Yep. I just don't know what the answer is. Is it Sims? It's hard for me to say it's Sims. I defended Sims a lot last week, but I can't, I can't say, I can't say, I can't say Sims is the answer right now. I got to go back and watch the other quarterbacks. I, I Purdy only came in for a play, though, so there's nothing to evaluate on that, right? Ugh, it's ugly at quarterback. Um, Husker, thank you for the 10. Exceptional defense. Oh, I already said that one. Well, thanks for the 10. I'll take a lethargic QB over four turnovers every game. Well, who's the game manager? Is it Chubba Purdy? Is it Heinrich Harburg? Who can manage the game better? It doesn't help. I don't know. Let's see. CJ says, stop making excuses for the dopey coach. Early fourth quarter down 15 or so, and this fool is still running. What's his other option? Nebraska couldn't throw it. You throw it, it's just three and out every time. At least when they were running, they had a chance to break something for five, ten yards and keep a drive going. I didn't, like, do you knock that? Really? What are they going to do? They couldn't throw. Everyone says, it's Sims, it's Sims. Yeah, I, I'm not telling you guys you're wrong. I'm just, I've got to watch. I've got to watch the game back. I'm going to watch it tonight. My flight's at 8 o'clock. So I'm going to go home tonight. I'm going to turn the game on. I'm going to watch it at 1.5 speed. So, you know, I got to get through it in 40 minutes and uh, we'll see. And then I'll have a real video and I'll talk about all the issues. The problem is, is there any positive? <sighs> positive was uh, I really like to and Wheelman says we need real talk. Not sugarcoated BS. What's the real talk, bro? Uh, it feels like we got the real talk in the chat and I'm joking responding for everybody else. I'm just letting you guys talk right now because I don't know the answers. So you tell me. Right now, everybody says it's Sims. It's Sims. It's Sims. Okay, so wait, is, it, is Harburg the truth? There's always next week, guys. That's funny. Harburg wouldn't be much worse. How much worse could he be? I agree. I don't think he could be much worse. Because maybe Harburg doesn't have, isn't, I, any argument I was trying to make against Harburg, I feel like he's the same as Sims in the worst case scenario. Huh. Harburg's issue is accuracy. Sims has some accuracy issues. We don't know if, uh, if Harburg can... I mean, it looked like Harburg could run today. Perfectly fine. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you guys are right. Give Harburg the ball. Who knows? Defense is legit. Only positive we've got. Harburg QB1 next week. Scott says, thanks for going to the game to cheer for us. GBR. I sat right in the middle of all the Colorado fans. But it was a good time. Yeah, everyone wants to see uh, Harburg out there. Hmm. Logic's Finest says, offense couldn't score. QB scored on a broken play. Offense couldn't get anything going at all. Defense was absolutely great at preventing yards after the catch. 
yeah, defense freaking swarms to the ball. Defense tackles well. They anytime a guy was in the open field, they they get at least two heads on him. So Malcolm Hartslog has some good tackles. Yeah, defense always tackles well, which is what we've now learned after two games. <laughs> Do you trust Matt Rule? So last week there were questionable play calls and questionable decisions I didn't like and that made me trust the uh, staff less, right? But today it was just pure domination on the offense. Like it wasn't like the play calls were that terrible. I mean, I guess it, you could say him not pulling out Sims after multiple turnovers could be like a questionable deal. But the offense just didn't have the athletes to go up against Colorado at receiver at offensive line they matched up a running back Rodas, thank you for the 20 says harburg what's interesting is if tony white has an elite defense this year and it's it's known and tony white's already a hot name will tony white stay for another year or would tony white be gone man you want to talk about stressful i'm not going to bring any bad bad vibes into here but mm, mm. Byron says it's more than Sims line is terrible and you can't say we had wait can't say we had a good receiving core last year because all they had was Trey Palmer that's true and that's why Frost's can any QB will do just let them play yeah the offensive line has some issues on the left side medium rare beef hammer thank you for the five not gonna lie Sims might be the worst QB I've ever seen there's a point in the game I actually thought Sims was sabotaging us he was that bad yeah I don't yeah, I don't know. I don't think he's sabotaging anybody. It's just he's got some issues. There's no question. Surf Bogey, thank you for the 10. If we don't figure out the QB issue, we're looking at a three to four win season. But even with our new QB, our wide receivers can't get separation. Our offense is really bad. The defense looks de decent. Yeah, that's the issue, right? If, if there's a new QB in there, what's the game plan? I mean, the whole game plan has to be just to run it more because there is no passing game. And I don't think a passing game is going to come. Is there a passing game that I'm not seeing? There was a, there was a good play on third down, third and 10 or something. Alex Bullock came over the middle. Sims fired it to him. He had his guy beat on the inside one-on-one. -on -one. Ball hit him in the chest. He dropped it. Harbor could have been the quarterback there. Would it have changed anything? No. So, yeah, passing games. Mm. Cornborn Mike. Hey, Connor, this wasn't the game I expected. I don't understand. I don't understand. What do you say? Sorry, the chat's going so fast. Oh, I don't understand why they didn't bench Sims sooner. Yeah. It's the question everybody has. It's the question everybody has. Uh, do you think Rule gets us to 10 wins in the next two to three years? What? 10 wins? Bro, I don't even think. What? We're talking about how do we get back to a bowl game next year? This, the question now is can they win five this year? 10? They, they need multiple recruiting classes for, for them to have the right pieces in for their system. 10? If Matt Rule figured out a way to get Nebraska to 10 wins playing in the Big Ten against Washington, Oregon, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan, USC, Michigan State in three years, wow, that'd be impressive. I mean... Track record says he did it before. Well, he did it at Temple and he did it against, or he did it at Baylor against the Big 12 teams. I don't know, man. Uh, Rodas, thank you for the 20. Connor, thanks for going behind the lines and giving us the insight. Love your content. Yeah, and hey, really quick, I want to tell you guys this. All the Colorado shit, like saying Colorado's a terrible place and um, it's negative and fans are mean. Seriously. It's not true. There's like childish Colorado kids. There's a few of them and they make stupid comments. But in general, Colorado fans are super nice. They're all passionate about their team. They're all super educated about football. Not all of them were like Dion riders. You know, they were all like normal guys who have been supporting Colorado for a long time. They want to see Nebraska get back to being good. Their stadium and campus are really nice. Like there's a lot of positives about Colorado. So if you ever have the chance to come to a Colorado game, don't let people tell you like, oh, no, it's gross there and they're mean to you and they hate Nebraska. It's just not true. Is, I promise you it's not true. I wore this red shirt all day. People were super cool. So make sure you come to Colorado for a game if you ever get the chance. Really good environment. Tickets were crazy though. I waited till kickoff. I paid 280 for a ticket. Normally, if I wait till kickoff, I could get into a game for like 50 bucks. Like I went to the Texas USC game, sold out in Texas, 
two teams who were ranked in the top 25. I mean, massive game. And I waited till kickoff. Tickets dropped from like 250, 300 down to 50, 60 bucks. I got in and sat in the same seats I sat today, kind of on the 40 yard line halfway up for 60. Today I paid 280. So this game was no joke, super expensive. I met Joel Klatt. Oh, that's a positive. So I'm walking outside the stadium by all the players and everything. Say what's up to some people. And then I'm walking by, Joel Klatt's right there. So I took a picture with Joel and I said, hey, I need like a, a PR person's email. And he, so he gave me his PR girl's email. He said, I can't do stuff during the season. I'm so busy. He said, but in the off season, I was like, okay, well, I have the number one Nebraska channel. I'm telling you, we would get views and they love you. People in Nebraska love Joel Klatt. He's really entertaining, obviously. So um, I'm going to try to get Joel Klatt on, which I think would be cool. That'd be an off season thing. But I told him the numbers. I was like, yeah, we almost got 20,000 subscribers. His eyes lit up. He's like 20,000 subscribers on a Nebraska YouTube channel. It's like, what's up, Joel Klatt? Come over here. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. That was a highlight of my day. I talked to a lot of people today. There was a lot of positive to my day. It's just, it's just hard, man. Uh, Ardwin says, do you know where the F Nebraska chants were coming from? I can almost certainly tell you it was a student section. It was only the students who were being assholes. That was it. There were a couple like regular fans who were, but other fans would shut them down. So Madison says the patience of Husker fans is insane. You all saying they will get there. Be patient. Like you haven't said that, said that the last two decades. That's funny as hell. What other, ch what other choice do we have, bro? What do you want us to do? What do we say? Fuck this fire Matt rule. He's not the answer. What? It, we got to wait. We got to be patient. The, the normal in college football isn't to have a turnaround in one year. So what do you expect? It's hard being a Nebraska fan. Uh, if, N, if Nebraska started like Colorado this season with a ranked upset and a big rivalry win, we'd be riding high too. We, of course. Uh... Joey says, as a Buffs fan, I'll say Nebraska football just isn't right without Nebraska being good. It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Because the problem is you don't get the same amount of passionate fans at Nebraska games. You don't get the same amount of passionate Nebraska fans traveling to games. So it doesn't make college football as fun because some of the most passionate fans in the country aren't as engaged as they should be. It sucks. College football fans around the country want Nebraska to be good because they're more excited and make their games more fun for their teams. It sucks, man. Um... Ron says, making horrible decisions, not putting handoffs in the running back's gut and dropping snaps has absolutely nothing to do with the O-line and receivers getting separation. Pop Warner type mistakes. The problem is, Ron, they're all problems. Like, the offensive line is a problem, and the handoffs are a problem, and the receivers dropping balls are a problem. It's all a problem. Big Boy says, I say Nebraska picks up three wins this year realistically. I'm hoping for a bull, a bull next year at this point. Yeah, bro, I mean, I feel the same way. I think Nebraska's got two winnable games the next two weeks. Not saying they're going to win them. Saying they got two winnable games the next week. Then Nebraska's got Northwestern. So you could, you could say Nebraska could beat Northwestern. So there's, there's three games right there. And then they need to have some battles against Purdue and Illinois and teams like that. Man, that's so frustrating. Uh, the patience is not on the fans. It's on the AD and the program. That's true, too. Fans have wanted changes multiple times. Fans didn't want Mike Riley. I mean, I remember being so pissed off when Mike Riley got hired. So many people were confused. Why the hell is Mike Riley being hired? That was a program decision. Fans couldn't accept that. So what are fans going to say? We're not going to games anymore. We're not buying red merch anymore. We're not doing anything. We're just tapped out until he's gone. It's just tough. It's just tough. Uh, Todd, thank you for the $10. I didn't know you were sending Super Chats today. I thought you were locked out. We had our chance at Dion. It is what it is. Don't even say that. It just pisses me off. Don't even say that because you know that Nebraska would never hire a guy like Dion. Uh, it is what it is. Getting no line in the QB by next year, our D can hold. Yeah, the, the offensive line is going to be a point of emphasis next year, that's for sure. Man. Alexander, thank you for the $10 super chat. There are always good and bad things to take away from this game, but I'll be honest. I'd rather give our backup QBs a chance instead of seeing a QB collapse with six turnovers in one and a half games. Yeah, I agree with you. I was happy to see Harburg in today. I wasn't happy that Sims got hurt, obviously, but I was happy 
when number 10 came on the field. It's like, okay, we got to change the pace. We got to see something different. And the section I was in had a lot of Nebraska fans. I could hear them all kind of erupt, like out of excitement. I was like, wow, that's where we've come to. Excited to see the backup quarterback come in. Uh, Nebraska Husker says it was over before it started. First year you were, first year or not, our offense is horrible. And defense will be on the field all year long. I never thought our, our offense would average seven and a half points a game. Yeah. I just thought the run game would be a lot better. I thought it'd be a lot stronger. I thought there'd be a lot more misdirection and zone reads. And I didn't think the offense could get worse than it was under Scott Frost. Hmm. Rick says, why does Nebraska only play one quarterback when there are others on the team that couldn't do any worse? Yeah, Matt Rule's really stubborn and bullish on this quarterback, on Jeff Sims. Is it because Jeff Sims is the only one he trusts? Is it because the other ones just aren't that talented or they can't operate this offense? They don't know the plays? What is it? I don't know the answers. I don't get to talk to Matt Rule, so... Why is he so stubborn? Because he is stubborn. He said, in the, if I didn't see this, people told me this. They said that Matt Rule said it was never a thought to take him out of the game in regards to Jeff Sims. So why wasn't it a thought? It would have been a thought in my head. Uh, need to groom the next QB. Everything's about quarterback. Oh my God. Everything is about quarterback. Z guy says, I'm turning off my emotional investment. I think a lot of people are like that. I turned off my emotional investment today. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It hit the third quarter. What point was it? When they, when they went up 20 to seven and they drove the field on Nebraska. Oh, you know what it was? It was on the play down the sideline to, uh, I don't even know who the receiver was. But Nebraska almost sacked the quarterback or almost got their hands on the ball, and then he still got it out down the sideline, and Colorado had a huge conversion, and then the next play they scored a touchdown. Emotionally, I checked out. I just, yeah, I, I couldn't do it anymore. So I put a smile on my face, grabbed my water bottle, drank a little bit, started talking to Colorado fans. It was just, you know, normal conversation, just chill. Couldn't even talk about football. It was just like, yeah, you know, where are you from? <sighs> Ty says your channel is going to struggle in growth if they don't turn it around, dude. Ty, don't even worry. I already know. This year, I talked to my dad about it the other day. He's like, yo, you know if, you're cha if, if Nebraska can't get it figured out this year, you're going to have to do some other shit, like during the season. Can't put all my eggs in one basket because I got to pay my bills, right? So I'm like, geez, you're right. Um, it's so frustrating because I really love this channel. And I love making content for it. The, the last two weeks were amazing. There was so much hype, so much positivity. It's just hard when they can't win. It's so good for Nebraska football and they can win. So good for the fans because there's so many of us. There's so many diehards who care. And we're so passionate. I'll tell you what, there are not many fan bases who are in the comments like this on a freaking random Nebraska. You guys don't even know me. I'm a random freaking Nebraska fan. You're just chilling in my YouTube comments for an hour after a game talking about every little detail. It's not normal. Boise State doesn't do this. I'll tell you that. We're better than Boise State. And Todd, don't worry about the super chats. You're good. You don't need to text me, tell me you can't send me money. It's cool. Don't worry. I appreciate you a ton. Uh, what does this say? Jesse says, did I waste money buying tickets to the Michigan game? Uh, hoping to meet Connor and Will Compton. That would make the trip worth it no matter the score. Listen, I'm going to be at the Michigan game, and I'll do anything to make you guys have a good time. So if you want to do a meetup, if you guys want to go to a bar the night before, the night after, and do something, whatever. We can get drunk together you know, cry together, whatever. I'm there for you guys. I am going to Michigan. And the reason I am going to Michigan is because I wanted to see you guys. It wasn't because I thought we could beat Michigan. Jesus. Now I definitely, woo, woo. Um, Rodis, thank you for the $100 super chat. Love you and your content. We'll, we will support you. Man, I appreciate a ton, Rodis. I haven't seen you uh, in the chat too often. Maybe you're new, but I appreciate it a ton. You're awesome. Everybody who sends me super chats, you know, it means the world to me. Alexander hits it with a 10. Thank you. I would like to end on a positive note in that our defense did more than what should have been expected for most of the game. They kept this game close. Once the offense rolls, this team will be tough. 
You're right. And it, it feels like it's always that way. The defense always keeps them in, but you can't rely on the defense forever because if the offense cannot score, morally the defense isn't going to be able to make it last. They're going to eventually get beat up, and they come back on the field, and they're like, yo, what the fuck? We couldn't score. It's just I get it. Corn crazed. Corn crazed. I'm on live right now. Uh, Ardwin, thank you for being a member. Uh, Metal man, I would love to meet you, Connor. Yeah, Minnesota game or Michigan game, meet me. Maurice Jones, agreed. We should have kept Casey Thompson. At least he knows how to hold on to the goddamn ball. It's going to be interesting to see what Casey Thompson does today. He's playing against Ohio. It's a home game. He played his first game against Monmouth, and they scored like, I don't know, 50 points or something. He had five touchdown passes. And I was like, yo, yo, let's temper our expectations on this Casey, Temp the Casey Thompson deal. Like, if we're going to say Casey Thompson's going to be a legit guy this year, and then we should have kept him and all that, whatever. Let's wait until he plays somebody good. So today he plays Ohio, much better defense, and we'll see. Obviously, it's just a fantasy at this point, and it's just complaining. All, all Casey Thompson talk is is complaints that Rule made, made the wrong decision. But in reality, it wasn't Rule. Rule said open competition, Casey folded, which do you want a quarterback who folded? Why did he fold? If he saw Jeff Sims play and Casey Thompson's a legit quarterback, why wouldn't Casey Thompson say, I'm staying to beat this dude out? That's a question in my head. That's why I never supported the Casey Thompson argument. Why wouldn't he compete for a job against a quarterback he thinks he's better than? That's a Casey brain issue. Because you, you have such a big ego, it's I have to be the name the starter. What? No, they have to go get other quarterbacks to compete. They had to get other players from every position to compete because obviously there was a talent deficiency. Casey's red flags to me. I, that's my take on Casey. Sure, he could throw the ball, but he's red flags to me. Hmm. Snaky YouTube says Connor's gonna have to work at McDonald's. I can promise you this. I'll be doing a lot of shit before I work at McDonald's. That's funny. Um, we need Casey's arm and Jeff's legs. Who's that guy? There's a lot of quarterbacks like that, but most of them are are starting at top 15 schools. Cause when you got a quarterback who could play like that, those guys are studs and they're winning games. Um, Mick Williams, thank you for the $10 super chat. Bro, you gotta watch the game from home. We only lost this game because of one player. O-line is not bad. Running is good. Defense is legit. Wide receivers, yeah, but look who's throwing the ball. All right, well, if the O-line played better than I thought they played, I don't know, I thought they got beat. Mind you, I'm watching individual plays. When you're watching the game, it's so much different from watching it on TV. Because when you're watching the game, you're, you're going with the ebbs and flows of the game. So I'm more locked in and more focused on certain plays than I am on others because of the rise of the crowd, right? Sometimes you're sitting down, sometimes you're standing up. So there would be certain times where I'm super engaged, the line would fold, and then in my head, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this line sucks. So, yeah, I got to watch the game. I'm going to watch the game tonight, though. Don't worry. This is just my, you know, just my initial initial talk to a bunch of other Nebraska fans to gauge, gauge where, uh, where things stand. Because I, I haven't even looked at Twitter yet, but I know people are going to have a bunch of comments about Sims based on what you guys are saying now. Uh, it says Casey can do a handoff. Really quick, I didn't see it. Because they didn't even show the highlight. They like didn't, the highlights were weird. They'd show some, but wouldn't show all of them. Did Casey mess up the handoff? Or did Gabe Irvin mess up, mess up the handoff? Was it a miscommunication? Like, what happened on that? I didn't understand. Uh, ben, ben says, I believe Casey left, not because of the competition, but maybe he saw the O-line wasn't going to improve and he was going to get hurt again. That could have been it. That could have been it. I don't know. Sorry, guys, my allergies. I'm standing in the grass now. <laughs> um, Nick says, Sims didn't put the ball in Urban's chest. Yeah, maybe that's why you guys are so hot on Sims. It's the simple things. If that's true and Sims can't get the ball in a handoff in the right spot, it's like, man, if you can't do the basics, if you can't even let us have a run game, I see what you guys are saying. Sims messed up the handoff. Handoff was short. Mm. Jeff Sims didn't stick in his gut. Damn. I wonder, do you guys think there's any chance that, um, that Sims gets benched next week? I haven't watched the rule presser, but to me it sounded like in that one comment, doesn't sound like that's going to happen. So I guess we just have to live and die by that sword. Interesting situation, I will say. Well, I'm going to go meet up. I got some, some corn craze subscribers I met out here. And they're at this bar, like, called The Hill. It's, it, or it's on The Hill, and they texted me the address. 
So I'm gonna go over there and hang out with them. I leave here in a few hours. Like I said, I go home tonight and uh, I'll take a shower, watch the game, get back with you guys tomorrow or the next day. It's just frustrating, but uh, is what it is. LR2 says you might need to get drunk after that. You know the best part is drinks here are like five bucks. Last night, I bought drinks for everybody. I bought it for like three corn crazy people, my friend. My tab was $45. I could not believe it. I was like, are you kidding me? $45? In LA, it would have been 300 uh, EK Films. I'm so effing hungry, dude. Hungry for what? Wins? Thank you for the $2 super chat. Uh, Austin says he thinks Harburg will start next week. <laughs> Noah says, Husker Nation, keep the energy high. We're the best fan base in college football. Two losses versus two good power five teams shouldn't kill us. We got this. That's true. They lost against good teams. I agree with you. Brady says, Connor, we love you. Love you too, Brady. Thank you for the support. Brady's been a huge support for Corn Craze, just so you guys know. You don't even know. Brady, $5 for a drink. It was freaking cheap here. You got to come over here. I'm telling you. Um, Husker, thank you for the $5. Colorado native, native here. Boulder sucks. Have fun, Connor. Boulder's not that bad, guys. The Submariner survived. No watch issues. No one tried to rob me. I got jewelry on. No one took anything from me. I got corn craze bracelets on. Nobody took anything. We're good. Uh, all right, guys. Well, thank you for the support. Thank you for being on the stream. Right now, it's all, all questions, no answers for me because I haven't watched it. So once I watch it, I'll get back to you and we'll go from there. But yeah, what's John Johnson saying? I'm going to say what John Johnson says. Fuck everything. There is no hope. Go Big Red.